Welcome to the next lecture in the course Quantitative Methods and Chemistry. The last class we saw how the computation program MATLAB could be used towards numerically simulating different data sets so as to help you set up your experiment or even understand how a setup works or how, a how an equation works. In this lecture what we will be taking a look at would be to take a similar example. Once again we will be dwelling on the rate kinetics, chemical kinetics and we will be uh, using it for Michaelis Menten kinetics as an example. Why did I pick this example? Because we have already seen how uh, rate can be determined. We saw in the previous week uh, if you are able to get concentration as a function of time you would be able to discern what is the rate of a reaction. The same thing will be applied here. And just that I will assume that the rate can be determined by any technique that you would end up using, any analytical technique like uh, spectroscopy or even basic titrations that you might end up using. That part will not be spoken about what is the specific uh, enzyme that we are discussing, but we will write the basic equations that dwell and help uh, MATLAB or rather use MATLAB uh, towards simulating these functions to understand how this experiment can be. Uh, reliably set up across different enzymes. So to go over some of the basics, Michaelis Menten catalysis is about how when a substrate interacts with an enzyme, it forms an enzyme substrate complex that goes on to release the enzyme and make the product. And uh, the rate constants for the formation and uh, the dissociation of the uh, enzyme substrate complex is given as K on and K off respectively. And uh, the step that results in the product formation is given as K cat, where K is a uh, rate constant for each of these steps. People who are afraid of uh, biochemistry do not have to be worried. We are going to be treating enzyme as a catalyst here. That is about it. Enzymes can uh, perform very specific reactions because of their uh, three dimensional structure and therefore people were quite fascinated earlier on to understand how enzymes function and how do they deal with different substrates. Like you can have the same reaction done by different catalysts, same substrate can be converted to products also by different enzymes and this model of Michaelis Menten was to understand how these different enzymes can be compared with one another. And in order to do that, they came up with a proposal of a uh, mechanism of this sort, where the enzyme and substrate become a complex. After they form the complex, the product is formed and the product is released while the enzyme is regenerated for further catalysis. Is not that the definition of a catalyst? You have the catalyst regenerated such that it can be used again and again and again. So for this process, what ends up happening when you want to have the rate or the velocity, you are going to be giving it as K cat times concentration of E s. One has to remember that this is a transition state many times or even an intermediate. You cannot call it a transition state. If you are writing it this way, then it is an intermediate. And when something is an intermediate, this cannot be isolated. So therefore, getting the concentration of the enzyme substrate complex is not trivial. So what one does is to get what is the rate of change of the enzyme substrate complex as a function of time. So since it is formation, it is going to be K on times the free enzyme concentration and the sub free substrate concentration minus the off rate with the concentration of the enzyme substrate complex minus the K cat of the enzyme substrate concentration. Remember here you are talking about the free enzyme and the free substrate. You can always have an assumption that you have excess substrate where the concentration of substrate can be assumed as whatever you gave in and however you cannot do the same assumption here. Here what might end up happening not all of the enzyme need to be interacting uh, with the substrate. So what you would like to do is that you would like to get it at the zero concentration of the, the basically the initial concentration of the enzyme minus the enzyme substrate complex. So what this ends up becoming 
एस के ऑन टाइम्स ई जीरो माइनस ई एस टाइम्स एस माइनस के ऑफ ई एस माइनस के कैट ई एस by applying the steady state approximation meaning that the rate of formation of enzyme substrate complex is the rate of dissociation of it meaning that it's either at a constant concentration or as es is being formed it gets converted to product and that steady state approximation you will have rate of change of es as zero if you do a quick math what you're going to end up realizing is that k on e not s minus k on uh, s plus k of plus k cat times e s is equal to 0. So, once we see this because we have just applied the steady state approximation enzyme substrate concentration would be given by k on e naught s k of plus k cat plus k on times s. So, one can immediately realize that E s is now given by s times divided by k of plus k cat divided by k on plus s. All that has been done is dividing by k on. And then what did we say? The velocity or the rate of the reaction is dp by dt which is given as k cat times es now we are just determined what is es so therefore this is going to be equal to k cat multiplied by am i missing something yes i'm missing the e naught let's add it e naught e naught times s divided by so this is given an equilibrium constant called km km plus s let me write km in green so that we understand which are all the things of interest so now what you are able to realize for this system km is of interest because it helps you understand how much of the dissociation of es in this equation we are concerned about k cat and capital k m capital k m is a form of an equilibrium constant and what you are able to realize here is that how quickly the enzyme substrate complex comes off either due to product formation or going back to the reactants divided by the rate at which it gets formed so this is something that gives the strength of the enzyme substrate complex while it gets formed and k cat is the rate at which you will form the product. So, this has an information of how quickly the enzyme substrate complex goes towards the product formation. So, for biochemists, these two are the variables that are of prime interest. And what you are able to realize is that the velocity of the reaction is based on the initial concentration of the enzyme, the substrate concentration at any, uh, as you set up this uh, kinetics. Unlike the previous uh, situation where you had a simple y equal to mx plus c where x was the independent variable, here you are able to realize you are having an equation of sort y equal to mx divided by c plus x of sorts. So, what ends up happening is that it is difficult for you to understand how this function will look. So, that is the basic purpose of what we will end up doing right now. So, let us once again switch back to MATLAB. So, as the first thing what we can try to do is to give a certain substrate concentration. Since I have already written the code, I am going to copy a portion of it. So, I am setting the concentration of substrate which is given as capital S in this form and then we can actually take some values for known enzymes. Km we can take it as 1.5 and 10 to the power of minus 2 and k cat can be taken as 0.14 just for the sake of simulation and these are all for the protein called chymotrypsin okay so the protein e is chymotrypsin here the substrate is the one that it ends up catalyzing 
and the Km, the form of equilibrium constant is 1.5 10 power minus 2 and K catalysis is 0.14 units. So now when you have something like this, what we can try to do, we can say velocity of the reaction is given by, uh, we also have to assume a certain concentration of the, of the enzyme. So why do not we set that? E0 is 1 E power minus 6. So basically what am I trying to do is we are setting the concentration of enzyme concentration in micromolar. Many, many times proteins are uh, generally getting used or uh, set up at micromolar concentrations. So what we have to do here is that we have to set uh, E0 as 1 E power minus 6. Okay. Now that we have done that, one thing that I have to put in here which I forgot uh, earlier is E0 star. Okay. So now what we can do, velocity of the reaction is going to be equal to K cat star E0 star S, we have to say a dot S meaning that for every uh, entity do this, Km plus S. Okay. So what has happened here is that when you put this formula in, it has calculated for every value but just that it keeps on updating it. So we can actually say um, for i equal to 1 into length of s, velocity is given by Basically the same way we have simulated data earlier, okay. So now you have the velocity, we can try to plot this, plot of S as a function of velocity. Of course, we always like to plot it with this. As you change the concentration of the substrate, this is what ends up happening. You are able to see a nice build up curve and maybe it is saturated, maybe it is not saturated. So now you are able to realize it is a function that goes something of this sort. So when you are plotting, when you are plotting velocity as a function of substrate concentration, you got a curve that looks like this. This does make sense because when Km is greater than the concentration of S, what ends up happening? Velocity is going to be given by since much greater than S. So this is going to be K cat times E naught divided by Km times S. Basically we are approximating the denominator to be Km. Since this is a constant, we have said these two are constant. Velocity varies linearly with the substrate concentration. You are able to see this part of the curve has a linear dependence on the concentration of the substrate. But as the substrate concentration increases, which is the next limit, and S is much greater than Km, what ends up happening is that you can approximate velocity as K cat times E naught times S divided by S. So the S cancels, so this is going to be K cat times E naught, so which is a constant which you are able to see as the concentration of substrate increases a lot, this tends to saturate. So let us say if you are able to extrapolate or if you are able to read this value off, this will give you K cat times enzyme concentration and since enzyme concentration is known, since you have put it in, this is what this value will help you determine what is the K cat. On the other hand, if you are able to get the initial line which will have this as the slope, right? You already know the concentration of E0, so you have K cat by Km times E0. K cat can be determined at saturating concentrations, while K cat by Km times E0 can be determined at initial concentrations. Since you know what is K cat and you know what is E0, you will be able to determine what is Km. So basically you are able to understand how to set this experiment up. 
let us go back to our simulation right now and try to see whether this has saturated. Okay. You are able to realize even at the substrate concentration that has been provided between 0 to uh, 200 millimolar, one is not able to see saturation. Let us make sure the concentration of substrate is given properly. Yeah, so this is given in molar, I am sorry. Yeah, so basically between 0 to 200 millimolar, you realize that it is increasing but it is probably not saturated. So one way of checking this further is by changing S. So give more values and then you can redo this simulation. then we can plot this again. So what ends up happening, all I just did with a simple simulation is for chymotrypsin, you need to have larger concentrations of substrate. If you realize previously we stopped here and we are able to realize as you keep increasing, oh from 0.2 to 0.3 also the value increases. Let us zoom in, take, take, take a look. You are able to realize from 0.2 to 0.3 also this changes. And then between 0.3 to 0.5, it changes albeit much lesser than what it changed from 0.2 to 0.3. And of course, as you go really high, you will realize that the amount of change that is happening is much lesser. So what one is able to understand is that by doing very, very simple simulations, one can discern what concentrations are required. Of course, I have to also dwell a little bit on the initial concentrations. If these are the points that one can actually take a slope out of so as to determine Km and at very high concentrations, one can determine Kcat from this assuming a given concentration of E0. Now that we have done this, what we would like to do in terms of the numerical simulation is of course not be happy with one enzyme, simulate it for different enzymes. In this example, what I have done is that I am uh, although I have data for a lot more of them, I am just doing it for three representative examples. Uh, we are of course starting the code with similar uh, things that we have seen before. Clear the screen, we can also say close all. And then you clear the screen, you clear all the variables and you set up a certain concentration of substrate. We just learnt we probably need more, so why do not we provide it? Even we can give 2.0, right? All this uh, we have to write a comment as always substrate concentration in molar, okay? So now that that has been done, now you are able to realize this is the concentration once again in uh, molarity, concentration in molarity. Uh, Km is in uh, units of uh, capital M, which is molarity again. So what we have done here is that we have set the substrate concentration, we have set the E0, we are, uh, we are setting Km which has the units of molarity, equilibrium constant is unitless but then we give a concentration of molarity meaning that to the what base has the equilibrium constant been defined in this case is molarity so as to keep everything constant and Kcat is uh, given the units of set, uh, second inverse. So now, the, now you get all of that, so now what I am trying to show here is that I am checking whether the length of Km and Kcat are same. If you are having three enzymes, each enzyme has its own Km and Kcat. I am trying to tell the program, make sure the length of Km and the Kcat are similar by, by this line of code. So what are we doing here? We are checking length check. Of course, this is the variable that we are defining. We are saying length check is length of Km minus length of Kcat. If length check is not equal to zero, then give an error. So why don't we try doing that? We will wantedly reduce the length and see that there you go. It gives an error saying that error Km Kcat is not correct, the dimensions do not agree. And then of course it has a problem as it goes further. So let us go back and reintroduce and when you run the uh, uh, program, you are able to get this back up again. So what you are able to see here is that one can nicely write a program which also takes care of the variables, um, whether they are consistent, whether it is uh, written properly or not. Okay, now that we have done, we will do the same thing that we have done so far, meaning that we will use two for loops in order to make sure we get our job done. First loop, uh, for loop is for the Km that has been used and the second for loop is for the concentration of S that we have gotten. Okay, so uh, and then we calculate the velocity given by E0 times Kcat times substrate concentration divided by Km 
plus the substrate concentration. This is what we derived in the Michaelis Menten equation. Finally, what we are saying is the rate is given by each of the velocity and I am of course are writing the output into another variable so that this variable can be reused. And then finally, we are plotting rate as a function of substrate concentration. You go here, hit enter. What you are able to see is that a lot of different things are happening. You are able to realize is for one of the enzymes. So let us say insert uh, legend. So you are able to say data 1, data 2, data 3. So data 3 is for the tRNA synthetase which has a huge difference that comes up meaning that the initial rise. So, you are able to realize that the initial rise the is quite steep for the tRNA synthetase while for the other enzymes it gets done very, very fast, right. You already each reach uh, saturation probably for something like this you have already reached saturation for the blue curve, yeah it is also trying to get to the saturation. But what you are able to appreciate in this is that of all of these three different enzymes data 2 which corresponds to pepsin ends up reaching equilibrium the fastest right it is it gets saturated already while the blue and the orange curves are just starting to build up right. So, if one is able to get the initial uh, substrate concentration if one is able to fit Km and K, uh, Km times E naught by K cat to this one which will give you a linear slope you would be able to determine what is uh, Km provided you get the K cat from the saturation curve. But you are able to appreciate the fact right away that when I zoom in for the tRNA synthetase, the initial concentration of substrate itself indicates the rate is not linear. These lines are not falling in a straight line. We are able to see the lines that are joining them are not forming a straight line. It is actually changing quite a bit. This is what comes up as a problem that one when one ends up uh, taking different portions of the curve as uh, detailed here. If you take this initial portion and the final portion and estimate Km and Kcat, you end up introducing systematic error. How many initial points are you going to collect? Maybe you do not have enough uh, sample so as to collect a lot of points as initial curve which results in end up uh, in ending up having a systematic bias to your analysis. On the other hand, if you are able to see some other uh, concentration you are able to say okay yeah this fairly is linear in this concentration regime and I can fit and to get uh, the ratio of Kcat to Km. This depends on the system and you are able to realize by this very simple numerical simulation although for the concentration uh, of the substrate used in this simulation between uh, tRNA synthetase and chymotrypsin, well chymotrypsin one can actually use this philosophy of initial uh, concentration and saturation concentration to estimate Km and Kcat, it actually fails in the case of tRNA synthetase. Let us try to take a look at what happens for the other enzyme. Um, interestingly enough, you have very, very few points. You have very few points. Fitting this to a linear curve will be a grave mistake, meaning that neither of the three points will be properly satisfied, which will end up resulting in a problem where the Km will be grossly misrepresented uh, by this data set. Why am I not blaming the Kcat is because Kcat almost we can zoom in how much ever we want and we will see that they are really, really close to each other. Remember since it is a simulation these numbers are different but what will end up happening in a real uh, uh, case condition is that your noise in your measurement that comes up due to different uh, experimental artifacts would be not helping you to distinguish these points. Basically the error bars on each would be so high maybe you will not be able to distinguish them. So what ends up happening is that one has to be very careful using these approximation methods such that you, sh you cannot just take the initial point and the final point and estimate it. A better way of doing it is to fit all of these data points so as to get whatever you want. We will be taking a look at data fitting in a moment. But before going ahead what you are able to realize and appreciate the fact is that this simple simulation has helped you understand how much data points are required. For instance, let us try to see for this red curve since it is not in a linear regime, we can actually add more uh, uh, data points in an earlier time or earlier substrate concentration. So let us try to say 1 e minus 6, uh, 3 e or 1 e minus 5 and try to see how this curves look. All right, so now let us zoom in. So, 
So now if you are able to zoom in, you are able to realize at least a few more data points came into place. Right? If you are able to see the initial rate at least has a few points that tend to fall in the curve. You can add even more points to this. and see what ends up happening. There you go. Now you at least have four sets of data points which are still not linear but is able to give you something as linear as you could get. On the other hand, if you see for the same thing for this one, it is so linear that you, you actually do not bother. These points are not required for this enzyme. Right? So, what we are once again able to realize is that one has to carefully ration in the concentration because remember the enzyme could be expensive, the substrate could be expensive, performing the experiment may not be easy, right? So, there are a lot of problems that come which one with a very simple simulation that comes up by having an understanding of the functional dependence of this given equation. But having blamed so much of the initial rate and the final uh, rate that one could get from this curve, why do not we take a final look at how this data can be fitted using the curve fitting tool. We have already seen how uh, simple rates can be fitted in order to get your final parameters. In this case, we would like to get Km and uh, Kcat. So what we will end up doing here is that uh, we have velocity, all right. So we will plot S as a function of velocity, which is for the uh, final one. Okay. So, I will just take a given example and we are taking the example of the uh, uh, tRNA synthetase. Of course, one can add even more number of values to these curves. Let us plot figure 2. Okay. So this is the figure 2, we are able to see that it exactly mimics whatever you got here. So now let us try to see how this can be fitted with the tools that we have here. In the spreadsheet program, you are able to see that very simple functions like linear function, some polynomials could be fit. If you are having a function that is neither uh, linear or polynomial, it becomes a little tricky. It is quite common in the field of science where people end up telling you that okay, you have an equation that goes velocity is given by k cat times e naught times s divided by k m plus s. It is quite tempting to take the inverse of it. And reduce it to something like this. One over s, one over k cat times e naught. So what one might end up telling you is that okay, plot one over v as a function of one over s. You are going to get a curve which has an intercept that goes as one over k cat times e naught, and then the slope that comes up as k m over k cat times e naught. So this is quite tempting to do because it is easier to fit linear uh, curves. But however, there is a problem that comes up. Remember, when you have a rate that you are measuring, let us say v plus minus delta v, taking the inverse of 1 over v, how much ever small errors that you have in v will get blown over when you are doing 1 over v. So that is not a good idea, right? We have learned what is error propagation. And at the same time, 1 over s could also have an error that is going to get unnecessarily amplified or in some cases mitigated. For instance, in the first order reaction kinetics, we tend to do ln of a where we take the logarithm of uh, concentration. In this case, what ends up happening, the measurement that you get from concentration is actually reduced in terms of the error when you take the ln. So therefore, you are going to have better fit. So these all cause a problem. Although these have been done quite a bit uh, in the past, that was done because the fitting algorithms were not excellent, but right now we have wonderful software to do all this for us. Now that we have seen how to simulate michaelis menten curves this class, we will try to take a look at how these curves can be fitted uh, in order to determine what is the Km and Kcat in the next class. Thank you.